Lots of snow and frost leading up to this weekend, so inevitable that some of the games would be cancelled, but not at the Green Yards. That went ahead for the big Premier One clash between Melrose and Selkirk. There was just one try in the first half with Lee Jones crossing for Selkirk converted by Mike McVie who also kicked two penalties as did Scott White for Melrose. With Sean Crombie and Neil Darling both yellow carded in the first period Selkirk put on a superb defensive display so 13-6 at the break to the visitors was an excellent return for their efforts. Just after half-time, Selkirk went 12 points up when Simon Cross broke clear and lobbed a pass out to Ross Armstrong on the left. It was Armstrong's first try of the season and it won't come any sweeter than this. Soon after, Scott White saw Callum Anderson out on the right and his kick ahead was grounded and White's conversion made it 18-13. But Richard Higgins was penalised for a dangerous tackle and sent to the bin, giving Selkirk a golden opportunity to drive over for their third try, with Rob Taylor at the bottom of the pile to claim his second try in successive weeks. But Melrose refused to give up and a superb Jordan Macy break split the Suter's defence wide open and with James Liu on his left gave the scoring pass. Scott White didn't miss a kick at goal all afternoon and slotted the extras to set up a nail-biting finish. Melrose pressed into injury time but couldn't get that winning score and it ended 23-20. I believe that, that's a double over Melrose, obviously, and I'm, yeah. very, I'm sure you're very, very pleased to have done it here at the Greenyards. Yeah, I mean, it was, a, it was a big thing coming to beat them here. I mean, it was a good win at home for us, and, um, you know, we, we target, targeted this game. Uh, they'd been running well uh, eight games in a row, but as we say, with the Borders Derby, form book goes, and it was some game. Yeah, I, th I think they just wanted it a little bit more at the end. Um, we sort of gave it everything we had that last ten minutes, but we just let ourselves down in the first half and that and all the boys are pretty disappointed at the moment so well, we're going to live with it now and get on with it so come back next week better hopefully. Um, I said to the boys before the game weekend this is a great place to come and play rugby weekend this is what uh, the first division's all about coming like your green yards again a lot of history I said but we've got to perform again just wanted that wee bit more that we've been doing at home last week who I thought we played well last week but I just needed that wee bit more especially against a, a team like Melrose kind of a date Eight wins in the bounce, so they're, they're a quality team there, they've, got, they've brought some imports in, so they've got to be a strong squad, but we came here and I thought uh, that was one of the best first half performances we had played, a bit edgy at the second half, we kind of made a, maybe a few errors, we, kind of, we still try to run for the rain 22 and quick penalties in the last five minutes where we maybe should have a touch, just calm things down a bit, but, but overall it was a, I thought it was a, a, a good performance for the boys. I think the, the game plan was to obviously keep us in the playing the rugby in the, in the right areas and deep in our half, and which we kind of fell for as well. We talked about that before the game, but played a lot of rugby, but again, I think Circuit were controlling where that was, and just when we got into that red zone, there was just a, a, a little error each time and let off at the hook. But um, I thought we had the, the turning point when we were 15 minutes to go there, and um, we had a chance, we turned over the line out, just a bit of sustained pressure, it was one score in it then, and we ended up back in our half. And, uh, we didn't use the ball very well at all today. We had chances at the end to win that. Um, just, just didn't do it. And it just, uh, mm. Bit of disappointing. How key a match do you think was this to win at this particular point in the season? Oh, it gives us a lot of confidence, I think, um, especially the way Melrose were going, and um, we can only go on from here. That's a good result. Uh, the games have been winning. We've only been winning by three and four, and you know we haven't been playing that well anyhow. So that was kind of. I guess that was always around the corner a game like that, just the way we have been playing. But I mean, we've been winning, so we've been happy. But like I said, um, that was real disappointing today. So 
for us, you can, we've got to keep on building that. It's, uh, it's the thing I say to the players, they'll be happy where you are, you can, we've got to build it. If we win today, we're still above uh, Melrose, and that means you can, we're the best border team at the present moment, and let, let's go for that today. And uh, that's the double in Melrose, which is for us in the first kind of first year again in the first division, it was, a, it was kind of good for us. Um, it's going to be a big back cap at the top. We needed to win today, you know, third playing fourth and move. Keep putting the pressure on. Heritage getting beat as well, so it was a big weekend. But credit to Selkirk, uh, they deserved it. Um, everybody said it was a bit of luck early doors for them. It's not, and they're showing that. But um, as a rugby player team, I think we just were guilty of playing too much rugby today, rather than you know getting them pinned back and uh, making them play in, the, in their own 22. So. That we're sort of looking to build off that game today and put us in the third. And now it's taking a backward step, but um, you know we've got some good players in our team, and you know John and Chica, you know. As good as you're going to get around here for coaches, and I will bounce back hopefully in the next couple of weeks. So, and of course, the first of two border derbies in, 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 on the trot with the second one next week. Yeah, it's it's like uh, that's what I said to players. Uh, kind of got to look forward to that. Can okay, um, they got six tries? Uh, we've got six tries against us at Hoyke. Can okay, uh, Hoyke will be desperate for points? Um, they've uh, had a few changes in the personnel off field, and, and they'll want to put that right. And uh, but they're coming to Philip Paul, and we've got to make sure you can try and. Keep them playing rugby at home. We don't be defensive and, and and let's have a go and uh, and still have that bit of bitterness in the back of our mind at Hoyke that can okay, that defeat and so can okay, we'll go back to that and I hope we can bring that into the game next week. There's no change in the top four positions, but with Heriots blowing a 26-0 lead to lose at home to Stirling County 32-26, Selkirk have closed the gap on their Edinburgh rivals. Next week, Melrose play Borough Muir in front of the BBC Alba cameras, a game you can see live on Sunday at 2.30 on Sky Channel 168 if you can't make the trip to Megatland. Meanwhile, the big local derby in Premier 1 is at Philippoch between Selkirk and Hoyk. Hoyk desperate for points, while Selkirk wanting revenge for their defeat at Mansfield Park earlier in the season. In Premier 2, only two games were played, none involving the Borders, but next week Galler are at home to Haddington, Kelso hosts GHA, Jed travel to Stumel in a third against second clash, while Peebles are on the road to Musselburgh. Other local fixtures are on your screen now. After the break, the result of our competition and a look at the Borders rugby rankings. Welcome back to Borders Rugby Roundup. And last week we set you a competition for tickets for the Edinburgh Wasps game in the Heineken Cup. Well done to our three lucky winners, who were Donald Robinson of Kelso, James Anderson in Musselburgh, and Ian Watts in Edinburgh, who all spotted the mystery player as being Ross Ford. OK, let's take a look at the Borders Rugby rankings now. And well done to Hoyt YM, still the most successful core team in the Borders. Top try scorers are Kelso winger Michael Tate, Melrose fullback Jordan Macy, and Langham flanker Stephen Nicholl, who've all scored seven so far this season. Selkirk topped the try scoring table, and they've also scored the most points so far this season, while Hoyt YM have the best defensive record. Peebles Dan Botwood is still the region's top point scorer, with Melrose captain Scott White just behind and Kevin Utterson third on 97. Check out our website for all the stats that you'll ever need to know concerning Borders Rugby. Well, that's all for this week. Join us again next Monday for Borders Rugby Roundup. 